Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. I don't know what to say, but it's Christmas and we're all in misery. What's up, kids? You're listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Shittersful Cheeseman. And this is Chad, 14th Amendment, so watch. And on this episode, cyber trucks, threads, and porn stars sounds a lot like my Christmas wish list. Let's do this. <laughs> Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business from turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. So no cold open. I mean, it was all cold open. You didn't have anything right. leading you in. You don't have sound effects. This is this is not a great uh, this is not a great holiday se- season for Joel Cheeseman right now. This is awful. This is it's your it's your Nirvana. It's your Nirvana. No sounds. No like baby crying or or yeah oh. Uh, yeah. Our our software for podcasting we can't play sound. So Chad's gonna throw a, these in. I don't know what. I'm out of control. I don't have sounds. I. I this, yeah, this is the coal in my stocking <laughs> that I dreaded uh, when we yeah. when we moved over to to this this platform. But anyway, it's Christmas time. It's holiday season. Our Christmas cards are out. Everyone's feeling the yeah. love. love. You're it. you're in. Who knows where the hell you are? Some sunshine coming through the window. You got bottles of booze behind you. If all you right. haven't seen this stuff, go to ch- go check check us out on YouTube. You can see all all the glory of Chad's backgrounds. Yeah, it's not relegated to his Facebook feed. You can go on video and see the elaborate <laughs> vacation spots that it so where are you now and, and what are you doing? I'm on the island of Madeira, which is a Portuguese island, but it's literally off the coast of Africa. Uh it mm-hmm. is pretty much a mountain in the water. So I mean it has got just this crazy hiking trails. I mean it's it, golf courses, it's it's pretty amazing. So we're here um through christmas and new year's eve we have family mm-hmm. coming in for new year's eve we're going to do big airbnb right now i'm at a, actually at a friend's house at uh, at his bar as you can see mm-hmm. um so yeah now we're just living the life and enjoying shorts and t-shirt weather so i'm going to give you a little uh ai uh scare scare story so you uh, and i on our we chat we chat on message uh, i'm or whatever facebook messenger uh-huh. And you you put a picture in our feed about you and Madeira. And on Instagram, I, I'm starting to get ads about visiting Madeira <laughs> for vacation. So that's that's how scary smart uh, this this AI shit is is getting. It it's getting that a little out of control. Right. A little out of control. And Pouring yourself a beer. Two. That's nice. Pouring Being myself six a hours corral, ahead. Yeah. Which is. <laughs> Literally, this is a Madeiran beer. Yeah. Uh So while you're while you're here, you got to drink the stuff. So they've got Madeiran um, port, wine, rum, rum, which we'll have later. Uh, So yeah, we're just trying trying to do the the most Madeiran things we can. Well, that's good. So so you remember last week I said uh, if anyone in Chicago wants to lose some money on the Browns Bears (laughs) game, uh, so so two people took me up on that. One was Joe Shaker. Uh, which I knew would happen. And then our yeah. boy, Mike Schaefer uh, at Factory Fix. So Joe being the the grizzled veteran of the betting world uh, took the points 
They gave the Bears three and a half points. The the Browns won by three. So Joe technically won in Vegas. Yeah. Although my Browns will be in the playoffs and his Bears will be uh, in Bora Bora. Uh, Mike, on the other hand, at Factory Fix, took it straight up like a man. No points. Uh, so I it's, I win. I came out even. I pushed on it. But I got a nice I got a nice uh, bottle of of scotch from Mike, and I sent uh, Joe some nice some nice red wine, which was his request. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I like <laughs> how you talk about uh, somebody taking it like a man uh, and going straight up, and knowing that whenever you get a chance to take the points, oh, take, you the, take the points, the fucking points. Oh, I take the the best <laughs> the best ever uh, with Joe was Ohio State Wisconsin, and oh, Ohio State blew them out. But Wisconsin had so many points that, that that I lost the bet. So yeah, yeah, you got to take the points. Sometimes you have to. If it's Ohio State, Wisconsin, you can't go straight up on that. Bet. You got to take the points. Yeah, you got to take, take the points. points. All right, we'll go, well, my friend. I'm, I yeah, have a good holiday. Uh, I will not talk to you hopefully at all next week. Uh, take a time out, and then we we <laughs> hit the lucky. ground running. We hit the yeah. ground running next year and uh, spend a lot of time with each other. So let's get to shout outs. Uh, yes. you can go first because it's, it's yep. Christmas time. Okay. A uh, big shout out to, you might know her Penny Queller, uh, yeah. and the mom project. This is, uh, from, uh, S I a quote, the mom project, a staffing provider with a special focus on mothers returning to the workforce, which is what we need kids, uh, named the longtime staffing industry executive Penny Queller as its president to lead the company through its next stage of growth and end quote. Uh, Penny was already working as an advisor to CEO Allison Robinson, who has mm -hmm. been on the pod and will transition. Allison will transition to a new role as founder and chairwoman. So big shout out to Penny and the mom project. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mine is much less professional. I hope that you can bear with me. My <laughs> shout out. That goes to Aiden Mace Chiropsky. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, who the hell is that? You. You're, in, you're in Europe. You may not know this, but uh, a 25-year-old staffer, uh, a Senate staffer this week decided to, well, he didn't do it this week, but he shared pics recently of having sex, sexual intercourse in a mm -hmm. Senate hearing room, the same Senate hearing room where they, they vet uh, Supreme Court justices and really important people. Uh, Aiden, Aiden decided to do the nasty. Uh, he, he recorded it, put it on a, like a private, uh, group Dummy. chat. Didn't think this would yeah. come out. Shocker. It did a uh, lesson for Duh. the kids. If you put it online, there's a good chance that it's going to be found. So Aiden works for an 80 year old Senator. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine what that conversation was like. 80 year old Senator who's leaving, uh, the Senate, uh, from Maryland. Um, he was fired, shockingly, uh, uh -huh. and people are digging up some really interesting stuff on this cat. They're looking at his Venmo purchases, uh, his Twitter stuff. Like, kids, if it's on the internet, it can come to bite you in the ass. Don't do it. Uh, Aiden, cautionary tale, but shout out to you, my friend. Sex in a Senate hearing room deserves a shout out. Deserves a shout out if nothing else does. Yeah, well, I can tell you what the senator said. He said, everybody's done that, but nobody's stupid enough to actually take a video and put it out there. You got caught because you're an idiot. I mean, that's, you know, that, you know, that 80 year old senator has, has had plenty. Where of would be the whatever. ultimate, like on, on the down low sex? Would it be the, the Oval Office? Oh God, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you could pull that off, I don't know yeah. how the hell you'd pull something like that off. But I mean, if you're yeah. in a Senate room, and for God's <laughs> sakes, I mean, you know, it's it's whatever. It, it you go to a skiff. That's where you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it was worth uh, it, man. It, Hope it was worth it. Yeah. Uh, and what's better and worth than sex in a skiff is free stuff. Free stuff, almost as good as sex in a Senate hearing room, is free stuff from Chad Cheese. We're talking <laughs> right. T-shirts from Job Get, beer uh -huh. from Aspen Tech Labs, yeah. a bottle of bourbon from Chad, and myself, our pick from our our mm -hmm. friends at Tex Kernel. Uh, and if it's your birthday, and December what? birthdays are something special, uh, mm -hmm. you get a, a chance to win a bottle of rum from our friends at Plum. Yeah. Another trip around the sun is being celebrated by Holland McHugh, Monica Ebye, Nick Bradford, Mike Politich, 
Tina Davis, Angela Aguilar, Nick Hutchinson, Kim Gray, Lex Kramer, Ali Raza, Daniel Bailey or Danielle Bailey, Jonathan Martinez, Kelly Hervanic, Aaron Matos, and our 25th, December 25th birthdays, our, our baby Jesus birthdays go to Jeff Stanton and Craig Rhodes, who are celebrating on <laughs> December 25th, which I can't imagine a worse day for a birthday than no. Christmas Day. Like, how screwed are you on the gifts if your birthday is on Christmas? Anywhere inside the holiday region, I think you pretty much get yeah. screwed. But yes, yeah. My dad, who I said birthday. turns 84, his is on the 20th. His is tomorrow. Yeah. When we drop this, it'll be his birthday. He bitches all the time about how much his birthday sucked because it was it was right near Christmas. <laughs> uh, but what doesn't suck is events, baby. That's right. Travel by Shaker Recruitment Marketing. We already have eight. That's right. The Ocho conferences planned for 2024. The very first is um, an event in San Diego. That's yeah. right, kids. T-A- the whales, you know what? Uh, we're, yeah, we're going to be hanging out with <laughs> koalas. Yeah, no shit. Koalas. At the zoo, uh, we're going to be um, at the zoo with our friends from Koala Fi. That starts with a Q, ends with an I. Koala Fi. Um, you got you got to go to chadshees.com slash events. You got to check out where we're going to be. Uh, mm-hmm. We're really stoked about this event. Definitely stoked about working with Evan White this year because that guy is going into overdrive. So mm-hmm. really, really excited about 2024. It's shaping up quick. If you want to get in and you want to do some booth stuff with us and VIP parties or what have you, get a hold of us ASAP because they're going fast. Yep, going fast. And by the way, it's not an it's not a uh, Chad and Cheese event, but I will be in Montreal in January. If you're in town, yes. say hi. Uh, I'll be seeing the hiring branch folks. Going to go see some hockey with the Canadians hockey. versus the Oilers. Little Connor McDavid. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but yeah, we got a full plate next year. Uh, I'm getting too old for this shit. I don't know about you. <laughs> Luckily, we I have video Vegas, uh, that we can we can okay. do new stuff with. And if, by the way, if you haven't listened to the Chad and Cheese podcast, does data with our friend Toby Dayton at Link Up. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. We look at the monthly uh, employment reports. We dig down. We simplify it for the Chad and Cheese listeners. Uh, learn some stuff. If you haven't looked at that, it's exclusively on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash at Chad Cheese. Subscribe, like, and share, my friends. And while you're at it, leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know what we can do better and what we did well in 2023 and heading into 2024. And speaking of doing well, Chad, fantasy football. Fantasy football was not one of my strong suits uh, this season, (laughs) my friend. Uh, We're getting down to the the end. We have our playoff lineups uh, set. This is our final full leaderboard for you. Uh, Top four spaces. Go to go to the go to the playoffs for final glory, the chain, uh, the the social media affection mm-hmm. and and love. Our top four, all female, all yes. female playoff at uh, Chad and Cheese Fantasy Football, sponsored by our friends at Factory Fix, includes Michelle Sargent, Dina Perro, Marcy Mall, and Jill Patterson. Pretty much right up there the whole season. Uh, those ladies are going to battle out for uh, the top spot. Uh, your next four are your consolation prize. Mm-hmm. That's your boy Chad Sowash. There, uh, Joe Baga Dixon gets to gets to battle it out. <laughs> Dean Osner, Brent Losey, and the bottom four eliminated, annihilated, Don't. deleted Don't. from the whole scene includes me. <laughs> includes me, <laughs> Jasper Spanjart, Dennis. <laughs> I was number one last year. Tupper, and the bottom. The bottom. Kristen Urban. It was a fun season. Our season is over. You're back in the playoffs for the consolation prize. I can't wait to see who comes out the winner between Michelle, Dina, Marcy, and Jill. Uh, it's going to be yes. fun. Well, I beat the number one team last week. I was in fifth place. I'm still in fifth place. This is bullshit. Two years in a row. Fifth, fifth place. Fuck. Can Not I just say that I, I hate Kristen, Christian McCaffrey? I hate Christian yeah. McCaffrey. So, 
you've been making fun of Jasper this entire time. Yeah. But you're just one ahead of him, and I believe he scored like more than a hundred points more than you did. So uh, well, I don't his know. his he points were calculated on the uh, metric system, so I don't think it was. <laughs> Touche. Touche. <laughs> uh, topics. Yeah. I got to go with the Center for Auto Safety, who posted on Twitter, quote, at over 6,000 pounds, no one will ever doubt your manhood again. We get it. You were picked last in gym, and now you want revenge. But this isn't the answer. Buying this is why you were picked last. It's not. It's desperate and dangerous to everyone else on the road. Stop being picked last, end quote. Uh, yeah, so everybody's making fun of Elon, and we're seeing all of these these trolled videos where uh, the Cybertruck was trying to take a Christmas tree, and they were off-road, and they had to get pulled out by a Ford 150. Uh, they are now calling it the Sports Futility Truck, not Utility, Sports Futility Truck. Thing, thing weighs three tons almost a half ton more than the EV Ford 150. And on the Europe side of the house, which you mentioned, in the Rolling Stones art in a Rolling Stone article, quote, the truck is currently not available in the European Union due in part to regulatory issues and a Tesla VP has confirmed it's likely unlikely to ever be sold in the market. End quote. I mean it, this literally is just a, a, an Elon uh, testosterone kind of, you know, project. Yeah, and and it and people will buy it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It, it's the ugliest fucking thing I think I've seen. <laughs> it looks like it's the the Land Rover from Lost in Space from like the nineteen sixties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's totally cool. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to get, obviously, into Europe, not to mention, uh, I mean, Europe is, is starting to tighten down on their EV uh, rebates. So, I mean, there's there's a lot that's happening here. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, 
we'll we'll uh, see the prediction show, but I do not see this thing as uh, I do see it as kind of like a Hummer um, sales kind of like machine per se. Uh, but it's yeah, I, it, the only reason it's going to be around is because it's an Elon project and he loves this thing. See, the big difference between the Hummer and the Cybertruck is the Hummer was actually a military vehicle, and that motherfucker could go anywhere. I mean, you could not get that thing stuck. Uh, I know, because I had one and drove it in the jungle when I was 18 or 19 years old. I couldn't get that fucker stuck. Um, that thing, that there's no way in hell you're taking that. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I see this as really a cage match, a pseudo cage match between Zuck and, and Elon. So this is a Twitter versus threads kind of scenario. Um, the unfortunate, the unfortunate struggle that's happening here is really between idiocracy and civility. Uh, Twitter under, undergoes EU probes uh, under the new dis, uh, disinformation rules. Uh, their failure to combat content uh, disinformation and manipulation. So now we see threads pushing into Europe and Twitter getting pulled down in Europe. So why? I, I, I don't know, because they're amplifying anti-Semitism, Alex Jones, and even a seditious Donald Trump was let back on the fucking yep. platform. Uh, Twitter is just too toxic for advertisers. Billions have been lost. Elon told the advertisers to go fuck off. The blue check mark means nothing anymore. A possible $1 charge and also hiring platform fees. That won't be enough to make up for the billions that they lost in advertising. Uh, Twitter is top heavy, which means the top 10% of users account for 72% of time spent on the platform. Now, on the other hand, Thread's ability to onboard new users through Insta was great, but only if you have an Insta account. So mm -hmm. not so great. Threads is opening up, obviously, in the EU. So they're going to be able to have an opportunity to expand if they've got great penetration <laughs> for Instagram in, in, uh, in the EU. Um, yeah. But the point of the story is that threads won't kill Twitter. Hate speech is killing Twitter. Elon's public speaking, his tweets, and his behavior is already killing Twitter. So Threads just needs to sit back and focus on creating a better product and allow Elon to continue to pour gasoline on the fire that's happening over there right now. Yeah. Threads, uh, threads at launch grew incredibly fast. Uh, they did a great million. job of leveraging Instagram and all your Instagram people are now your Threads people and, and adding people yeah. was really easy. The problem has been stickiness and keeping people on. How much yeah. is the, you know, how much of that content is the same stuff that I get other places? Um, you know, our, our friend Levin, uh, who does the European show with us, uh, we asked him, <laughs> for, we asked his take on this whole uh, Threads in Europe. And his, his comment was tried it, uh, wasn't, wasn't mean enough. Uh, I quit or something. So it like for some enough. people, yeah. yeah, it's too nice. People are too pleasant. Um, so there'll be an audience yeah. Sounds for like threads a horrible and, word. and a lot of people are like, you know, I'm, I'm over Twitter, the toxicity, the Elon thing, the politics, the, mm -hmm. so they're, they're over it. Um, and they're going to threads. I, I see us dividing into a world of like threads users and Twitter users. And your Twitter user is 
sort of a brand that's different than Threads. I mean, if you look at every, just about every major company has the gold badge or the gold, you know, uh, that they pay for their account. And you see journalists and people. Not that everybody have pays for it though. Not, every, Not everybody. Yeah. I mean, we it. don't know who they just give it to and who's paying yeah. I me, mean, but, but Elon, it looked like he was uh, sort of strong arming companies. You remember some people were, were getting company names and buying the blue check and then posting as I was really Coca-Cola or I was really, you know, IBM yeah. and that was a whole mess. So mm -hmm. I think that if you're as a social media strategy, you're going to have to be on Twitter. Um, whether you advertise or not is different. I tend to think that if Twitter advertising actually worked, these companies would figure out a, an excuse for like sticking with the, uh, the, the platform, but it's a shit show. It's sad to me because Elon's Elon's launching rockets and landing them. He's giving internet to like the whole world. He's going to Mars and he dinks around with this social media shit. I, I just, it just frustrates me. I wish he would focus on this stuff and even Tesla, right? He has a point when he says, I've done more for like the environment than just about anyone on the planet. And you guys are still like up my ass. Um, we're only up his ass because he's a dick on Twitter and what he's yeah. doing at Twitter is really messed up. Uh, full disclosure, like I like toying around with tech and the whole Grok, his Grok AI, like I wanted to try it. So mm -hmm. I, I, I do pay for access because you have to do that. It's interesting. It's it's sort of AI answers with an attitude. It's like a little humorous. Uh, it's yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. This thing is going to a, a subscription only. I think maybe small businesses will advertise. Maybe local local people. Uh, the big guys seem to be not wanting any part of it. But I, I think it's going to go more subscription. They're going to give you more and more reasons to pay them a hundred bucks a year, and that's the business model, in my opinion. Threads will, yeah. threads will monetize like Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then all this well, TikTok think... is kicking everyone's ass. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which speaking so, of bets, yeah. have you gotten, have you gotten your, uh, your bourbon yet from, uh, the, the indeed whisperer, Jim Durbin? <laughs> not yet. I have not gotten it, but yet I will, I, I will, I will ask my people who are watching over the house to uh -huh. see if I've gotten it. So we'll, uh, yeah. we, we shall see because TikTok still running strong in the yep. US of A. As a matter of fact, I might even predict that uh, flipping this, that next year, Twitter in some European countries will be nixed uh, because of the disinformation and how he's not managing it. And yeah. the EU might put a smack on and say, we're going to close you down in the EU. And yet Twitter will still be, or not Twitter, but uh, TikTok will still be running in the US. Yeah. By the way, t TikTok genius PR campaign. Yeah. Like I watched like football game, they, like mainstream media and their ads are about how we make old people feel better uh, by putting shit on TikTok or like small businesses thrive when they use TikTok and average, like they are hitting mm -hmm. all the like warm and fuzzy and voting blocks uh, that, that will help keep them uh, solidified as an American company. So Twitter could take a little bit of a, a, a hint or a tip from what TikTok is doing marketing and PR wise, because it's playbook masterclass brilliant. Elon would have to shut up and that's never going to happen. Yeah, it's never going to happen. It's never mm -hmm. going to happen. Well, let's you and I shut up for a few seconds and pay some bills and listen to some of our sponsors. We'll be right back. All right, Chad, what's better to ring in the holiday season than a, a game of who'd you rather? And in honor of our friend leaving over in Europe, we're doing a menage a trois edition of who'd you rather by talking about three companies. And at the end of those summaries, talking about who'd you rather of those three? Are you ready to play? Who'd you rather menage a trois style? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. First up is Berlin's Urban Sports Club. 
<clears throat> they've secured 95 million euros to strengthen their wellness market presence. Surging employee demand for well-being programs drives companies to invest in benefits like those offered by the Urban Sports Club. Next up, we have Harriet, a London-based AI solution for HR data management. They've secured 1.39 million euros in pre-seed funding. They focus on cleaning data, offering tailored support, and easing HR tasks through its AI-powered assistant, accessible via Slack, Teams, and other platforms. And last but not least is Mistral. Paris-based Mistral AI, established by Meta and Google researchers, has secured 385 million euros in funding valued at $2 billion, pioneering AI chatbots. It focuses on open source technology, challenging major players like OpenAI and AI advancements. The company says its open source AI contrasts with tech giants' guarded approach, emphasizing community-driven development for safer, more robust software. Urban Sports Club, Harriet or Mistral. Chad, who'd you rather? So the sports club, this sounds like a perfect model for employees in Europe uh, in, in a very fad-ish culture for the U.S. Uh, looking for free kombucha bar uh, of the day idea, right? I mean, it, it seems like free breakfast, free kombucha, that kind of thing has been kind of like a, the thing, the fad mm -hmm. in the U.S., but they, they, they don't always last too long. I don't see something like this lasting incredibly long in the U.S. because, to be quite frank, employers don't give two shits about their employees. They they act like they do uh, for mm -hmm. the most part. There are some that that that, gen that generally do, um, but they're, they're they're looking at these organizations as a way to just try to suck some attention in to be able to prospectively pitch uh, their organization. Harriet, an integrated Slack system i mean that's really what it is is mm -hmm. it, slack is the core vehicle for widespread and easy adoption and then using other much harder to navigate data repository systems like google drive uh notion hi bob bamboo uh, zapier for the accumulation and the training of that data this is a really a keep it simple stupid model i, I love it i love it to death this is awesome but it feels more like a feature than a bigger LLM because they're just focusing on policies, uh, best practices, those types of things. So yep. I really love it, but it's not, it, it's not as big as Mistral, uh, yes. a, a European LLM founded in May, this May, uh, by three former Meta and Google AI researchers, um, funded by Andreessen, NVIDIA, Salesforce, BNP, do, do I need to fucking go on? I mean, this has yeah. all the right ingredients to work. Since Europe needs another major LLM player, I, I'm going to pick who I'd rather, Mistral, all damn day. Mistral, you like those high-priced high high priced, uh, companies, don't you? So talk about ahead. David and Goliath. We got one company at 1.39, uh, you know, pre-seed. 95 million and then like the, the granddaddy here at 2 billion valuation mistral so the urban sports club thing um i do love businesses that like to make companies feel good about what they're doing whether it's a diversity program uh benefits program and in this case like we let our we let our folks go to the sports club or whatever network this is uh, to socialize, work out, get healthy, get balanced, et cetera. So I think they will find a very strong market. They've been around for a long time, so they've grown organically. Um, and who better, uh, who better to sort of manage this than the, the country that invented kindergarten uh, out of Germany, urban sports club. <laughs> so I like the business, but do I like it more than the other two? Um, Harriet, total agreement that this is a feature, <clears throat> probably not a standalone company. Uh, and that's probably how they're built. That's probably why they only have a million sum in, in pre-seed. They are a they are a piece to a bigger puzzle. Uh, someone like a Personio, uh, a High Bob, uh, yeah. you know that someone like that should come along and, and gobble up someone like Harriet. Uh, I do like the name, by the way. Uh, it's kind of cute, but yeah, to me this is sort of like uh, I don't know scenery in a bigger picture. 
the real the real show here the 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 act the name on the marquee is mistral um this thing has an amazing potential to disrupt everything look open source has a pretty pretty long and and illustrious career in Mm -hmm. technology uh wordpress comes to mind uh php linux comes to mind which is basically the backbone of a lot of of websites and technologies that are out there so the question is can you take linux and what they did and even wordpress and take this sort of community-based development and and infrastructure and compete with open ai and gemini bard whatever google's going to come out with and and I see Facebook being the backbone for a lot of new things. Uh, our our final story about porn uh, includes Meta and their AI, so they're they're in there as well. How this will impact our industry, though, I think is is really uh, we don't know yet. So this is a chat. This is an open source chatbot, right? How many times have we talked about chatbots? Uh, are they ubiquitous in our industry? Whether it's Paradox, Wade and Wendy. Uh, you name it, all the ones that are out there. Is it is this going to make it super easy for someone to create a chat bot that will compete with Paradox? We don't know yet, but it certainly seems like the bones are there for someone to just put the meat on it to have a competitive product. Everything that Gemini is going to build or can, you know, this will probably uh, be a much cheaper, much easier to use, uh, less guarded, less walled, technology that people can use to build products in our space. Uh, I'm being long-winded, but it's my short answer of saying that Mistral also, you and I can fight over Mistral as to who gets what there uh, in this <laughs> menage a trois edition of Who'd You Rather, but that uh, is kind of a slam dunk for me. It wasn't really even that difficult of a decision. No, no, not at all. Much Which like, brings uh, us to, uh, what's yeah, self-checkout. We've never talked about this, I don't think. This this will be fun. So self checkout promise convenience, yeah. cost saving and efficiency, but faces criticism. Customers complain about glitches. Retailers combat theft. And some stores like Walmart and Target are testing alternatives. Labor shortages drive drove its expansion, yet rising frustrations and theft concerns persist, despite having fans and being a technology advancement. Workers monitoring self checkout stations face safety risks and customer hostility. Chad, is self-checkout on the way out? Well, I thought it was interesting that uh, one of the people in the article actually talked about discounts. If I'm going yeah. to check myself out, I should yep. at least get a 5% discount, um, which would be fairly simple for like a Kroger because you know they're going to raise their prices by 5%, right? And then everybody's going to pay that 5% tax at the, at the actual human register, right? So a lot of this from a confluence standpoint doesn't make sense. Labor is gonna be hard to find to be able to do those jobs. We're already seeing that labor is hard to find as it is. Theft, they already had that into the equation when they started. They're bitching about it now, they're full of shit. Their profits are higher than they've ever been. Grocery I know has uh, lower profit margins, but they're a lot bigger than what they have been. They're pulling in a shit ton of cash and their CEOs are getting paid more than they ever have. Um, Bernadette Christian, 59, a worker at uh, Giant Food in Clinton, Maryland, manned six self-service stations at once. And she's mm-hmm. afraid to help or confront shoppers who she said had become angrier since the pandemic. And I would say even before that, We've just had more of an angry kind of a feel uh, in in the U.S. So, yeah, you're talking about Bernadette. Bernadette doesn't want to come up to you and say, hey, what's that in your coat pocket? Yep. Or wait a minute, what did you just put in your bag? Did you scan that, right? I mean, you're, you're putting these people under some very, very horrible conditions. They've got to watch six of these things. They've got to come over to me. And I've got to wait for them to scan my uh, driver's license so that I can get my my bourbon when I want mm-hmm. it. Uh, I mean, it's just like there's just too many things that are happening here. So they're they're playing with the not enough labor. And then when you start to do these self checkouts, you have to have labor on the self checkouts. So it's I mean, it, it's literally, I think, a problem they've created for themselves. Yeah. 
when uh when I was growing up, my mom would get paid on Friday, and she would go to the bank and divide, like give a check to the the teller and say, "I want X amount of cash back," which was the cash she had for the for the for the week. And then from there, we would go to the gas station and we would sit in line and wait for the guy who pumped the gas to eventually come over to the car and have my mom say, "Fill her up." He'd fill it up, give cash. He'd have the little change thing on his belt and and give money back. This was the world before self-service. He would um, wash your vehicle and he would check your oil too. Depending on, well, in our neighborhood, not so much. Maybe in the high class district uh, that you <laughs> lived in. But uh, the point is like full service sucks uh, for a lot of people. Like I would much rather ATM it uh, not talk to anybody, uh, pump my own gas. Like that's the world I prefer. And yeah. I never, ever check out from the grocery store, um, with the, te- with the person, like, uh, the cashier, I like yeah. my own stuff. I get it done quicker. I'm more efficient. Um, and I love when I go to, to Costco or Sam's club and I have an app where I can scan the product and I can pay on my phone and I literally walk out and I have a barcode and the guy goes boop and he checks my thing and says, have a nice day. Like that's the yeah. world I want to live in. It scares me to think that we're talking about going back to the days of old or getting rid of some of this stuff. The problem is just like the, the, the dude in Walmart with the baseball bat that wants to beat up the janitorial robot, people are going to like find ways around the system. How do I steal stuff? How do I, uh, you know, raise a stink with the the twenty two year old that's like overseeing twenty self serve, uh, you know, kiosks? Uh, what happened to the day when uh, Amazon bought Whole Foods and we were supposed to just like walk in uh, and they were supposed to scan us somehow and know what we picked up off the shelf and we just walked out and it charged our Amazon account? Like, wh- when is that coming? Um, there's gotta be a happy medium. There's gotta be a a way to verify, let people go out the 5% discount. Uh, sure. That's, that's great. Uh, but that'll be more people in the self-serve, which will create more self-serve issues. If we add discounts to that, um, I, for one hope they don't get rid of this or I, how do you secure it? Cause we can't go back to standing in line, having the cashier scan everything and like, uh, you know, uh, Al, uh, butter on aisle four need a price check. And like they go, that world sucks. Like I love the self-serve world, figure it out. Uh, the theft thing I think is, is, is crazy, but our tech should be such now that these aren't issues. Damn it. So here's the thing. I'm here in Europe. I go to Aldi, I go to Lidl, I go to the continent and they don't have any of these self check aisles you go through yeah. a person yeah and nobody has a problem with that because they're patient and they understand that nobody's going to die in this process uh as americans we want it now we want it yesterday uh and that's one of the reasons why bernadette christian is really scared to confront people because we americans have turned into fucking assholes these toxic <laughs> twitter tweets have really just embodied who we've become. We care about ourselves. We care about ourselves. We don't care about the people around us. This is about our experience. And we, there's no reason why this can't work. Yeah. Like it used to. I do love the self scan. I do love it. Don't get me wrong, but I I haven't used it in three months since I've been here. You know why? Because I don't need to. Because I don't need to. You're right. It's a state of mind. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a comedian that talks about Waze, uh, the program where it helps you drive and miss yeah. traffic, and and he, he hates yeah. it because aside from the fact that it you know makes you go through a neighborhood you don't know and like cut through places uh-huh. and sort of be like, is your life that like urgent that you mm-hmm. can't sit in your car for ten more minutes and listen to music right. or think about life or appreciate what you have? Yes. We're, 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 we're way, we're way too fucked up in America. Uh, but we ain't going back in America. That's for damn sure. If anything, it'll be more like delivery. And I don't, I don't even want to leave my house. I just want to sit in my lazy boy and Netflix, uh, Mad Men episodes and get shit. And, and, delivered. and what about that says community? 
Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. We've, we've turned into a non-community community. Anyway, yeah. get me the fuck out of this. <laughs> I, know, I know. Thank God we have Chipotle to interact with each other. <laughs> Let's take a quick break and uh, put this show out of its misery with Porn AI. All right, Chad, you uh, you 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 took the porn stories away from me last week with the ISIM CEO <laughs> news news break. So I got I got to get it in. I didn't do that. ISIMs did. Yeah, that. I they had breaking ISIMs news. Did I, that. Yeah. We got to get get we got to get that dude on the show. All right, so uh, Sophie D, a veteran porn star, she's about thirty eight years old, I think, is collaborating with an AI company to create a digital alter ego, Sophie AI, resembling her appearance and voice, utilizing Meta's. AI model STXT trains the AI with explicit conversations, personal details, and AI generated images to simulate Sophie D. Sophie AI aims to sustain her income post performing years, offering subscribers a personalized experience at a monthly fee, drawing in around 700 users to date. <laughs> while D anticipates ongoing success, some of in the industry, like Ali Ray, Ali Ray find the technology premature, premature and not lucrative enough for sex work, cautioning against its hasty adoption. Chad, your take on the escalating drama of porn and AI. So scale, baby scale. And I mean, Ali Ray was, I believe, the nurse who was making $30,000 a month uh, or, or currently is on only OnlyFans. Well, of course, she doesn't want to see this happen because this is the next move, mm -hmm. right? Yep. This is, we're going to be able to scale from OnlyFans, which is beautiful because if you think about it, okay, so if you're a stripper and you're on, on the stage, you have that time. That's it. That's all you get. But if you go to OnlyFans, you have all of the, obviously, the, uh, the, the content library that you've created mm -hmm. over the years, yep. and that's scalable. People can dig into it. They can go through it over and over and over if they want to, but you're continuing to add to that, and that scales well. What scales better than that? This. Being able to create not just conversations in chats, but to be able to scale those chats to thousands of people at once with mm -hmm. one chat bot. And then be able to use possibly looking down the road, multimodal, where you're actually creating videos mm -hmm. and voice. This is this is the next step. And I really think that if any company is smart enough, and again, this is a blockbuster Netflix scenario. Yep. Blockbuster should have bought Netflix. Only yep. fans needs to buy one of these companies and they need to make it a pretty much a fee for anybody who wants to use it and they're just making transactional money they, they could really explode with that kind of model explode explode you say you that. You um, that. yeah our friend our friend adam gordon and i had a a, 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 a small back and forth on the, the history of this or the future of this and he's pretty convinced as i am as well that there'll still be humans doing this there'll still be humans um like real people showing skin and, and doing whatever uh, pornographic that they want to do. Um, the the challenge is, and it's to me, it's yeah, to me, it's, it's this conflict between the new, you know, the new face of porn only mm -hmm. fans and spare time and showing skin and everything. And maybe a few chats here and there versus a old aging porn star being able to leverage her brand and her her portfolio of, of work, if you will, and being able to provide that in a virtual format for the rest of her life, frankly. Oh, yeah. She can still be 25 and whatever when she's 75. Yep. Um, but the, the key there is she's a porn star that has built a brand and a, an audience, whereas if I just go on OnlyFans and have not done porn or not have any kind of wide audience, the chances that I become rich are much less. And I, I hate the idea of competing with porn stars from the past now are producing porn uh, <laughs> well into their, their golden years. Throw in the fact that you're going to get VR at some level, you're going to get sex robots. Um, and this thing is going to get strange. Like you're going to be able oh, yeah. to customize, you know, the girl you dated, you know, the one night stand you had, had back in 98. Like I want to <laughs> produce her. 
and so like go back creepy. in time or it's I want so you know creepy. like it, it that's where it's going dude or I want it like I love Jennifer oh. Aniston or I love whoever Selena oh. Gomez I want to have her as my slave digital slave I think sex, what's going to happen whatever. is people are going to own their own likenesses at that point, it, it, let's hope so that we don't have to play that game. Oh my God. But I mean, being able to create. It'll be, it'll be personalized. Kind of it'll be just for me. Era. I'm not going to publish it anywhere. It's just for me. It's just for my, like, I don't know how you police that. Um, but this thing is going weird, but it, it's too easy to scale and the costs are too low uh, to not disrupt what OnlyFans is doing. And the money yeah. that girls are making on OnlyFans that is not sustainable when you look at what technology is doing. Uh, I hope they never digitize Santa because I'm on the nice <laughs> list this year, Chad, and I can't wait to see what's under my tree. How about you? Uh, hopefully it's not an AI uh, girlfriend because I don't need any of that shit. It's hard. Those are skeletons. Chad one, does not need. One real woman. <laughs> Little Based on your background of booze, Santa has already seen you, my friend. Happy holidays. We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? A podcast. The Chad. The Cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!